Hello everyone, my name is Audie Ratliff and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's Weekly Production Diary Series where I share with you each and every week all of the happenings that go on here at the Ratliff Mandolin's Workshop. Uh, normally I build mandolins in groups of 10 and this mandolin that I'm holding right here is number 7 in the current batch of 10 and I'm getting ready to sand this mandolin in hopes of being able to shoot the final coat finish on it today. This is a country boy. Normally country boys have a satin finish, a single ply binding, and uh, no ornamentation on the headstock. Now this mandolin is different in the, in the fact that it has binding around the headstock. Uh, and that is due to the fact that if I need necks, I'll just make, um, I'll get a great big chunk of two inch maple and I'll make necks out of that. And sometimes I'll make 20 or 30 or 40 uh, necks where they're pretty much ready to fit into the mandolin. And then I'll just throw them in a box and use them as they, as they do. Well, when I was making this batch of mostly country boys, um, I didn't have any non bound necks left and so I but I did have plenty of uh, things with the binding on the headstock so I went ahead and used them so the end result is that whoever eventually winds up with this mandolin will get the added perk of a bound peg head uh, although it's not supposed to be number two on this mandolin which is uh, uh, what we're going to talk about next is that this one is going to have a gloss top and a gloss peg head and the reason for that is, uh, well, let's just talk about lacquers. Normal, normally, the, the procedure for putting a finish on a country boy, um, I use a brand of lacquer called Watco. It comes in satin and gloss. And I usually shoot the bill coats with gloss and get everything slicked and all the little dust particles and, and any kind of issues with this finish is all taken care of while I'm shooting gloss on it and then as the last thing that I do I will load the gun up with satin lacquer and cut the air pressure down pretty low and just sort of miss that satin lacquer on there several times so that uh, so that it won't flow together but has a little bit of a texture to it and a satin coat it's, and I think it's a beautiful finish, very nice, uh, kind of uh, reminiscent of, say, the back of uh, an Ovation guitar or something like that. So it's a very nice finish, and I really like it. Uh, Watco is wonderful, very easy to work with, very easy to sand in between coats, and I like that. Now, for the last several master model mandolins that have a gloss coat finish, I've done the same thing, just... Uh, uh, shot the bill coats and everything with the gloss Watco, just left off that last step of satin lacquer and polished that out. Now, as much as I can praise Watco for the country boy finishes, I have to be honest, to polish that stuff is sheer torture. It doesn't like to polish, it doesn't like to clean up like that. It's, um, you can, it, most notably, you can do that right there with the rag or something and just leave scratches in this finish and even if you sand it out with say 2500 grit paper and then repolish it you can still hold it up there to the light and see where those cloth scratches were at and um it just takes forever it's 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 just a very unfriendly uh lacquer for polishing this mandicello that you've seen me put uh, inlay and stuff in the last couple of videos it's going to be a gloss finish so i'm i'm thinking that although you can take this watco lacquer and polish it out it just takes twice as long on a mandolin than normal now uh, this mandicello here is going to have four times the surface of a regular mandolin and i'm thinking holy cow this is going to be absolutely it's going to be 10 days of just pure murder to try to get a gloss finish on this Perhaps I should try something else. So to that end, I have ordered uh, a gallon 
of lacquer a gallon each from two different companies. Number one is Mohawk. They have a product that they sell that's uh, called a classic instrument lacquer, I think, and I've ordered a gallon from them, and that's what this is. And although I haven't opened the box, I've also ordered a gallon from a paint company called Cardinal. And the, I think there's this, uh, I can't remember the exact uh, product name, but it's like guitar lac or something like that. So it's designed for musical instruments. One of the reasons I wanted to put that on this mandolin and polish the tops and the, and the peg head was to see the polishing characteristics of, of this lacquer. And so, uh, like I said, to that end, this mandolin here has been shot with mohawk and the next mandolin in the batch will be shot with the Cardinal. And wh what I'm going to try to do is still do the Watco mist coat of satin on the back and the sides and the neck. And then we're gonna polish the top and the peg head out to see how, how much we like it or dislike polishing out Mohawk. So my itinerary for today includes uh, sitting here and uh, taking this thing down one more grit level with this 400 grit paper. Hopefully it'll be good enough that I can shoot the final coats on it. I will shoot satin Watco lacquer on this and see if that will work. Neck back to the sides. And then I'll have enough here to polish these things out and see how that will work in a week or so. And that is exactly how my work week started out. I now have the final coats of finish on this mandolin. The Watco uh, mist coat went quite well on the Mohawk base coat and the parts that didn't get the mist coat here and here look very nice. They, all they really need is just a, a good slicking down with 2000 or 2500 grit paper and we can try the polishing and see how well that works out. So we'll let that cure for a little while and for the rest of the work week uh, amongst the things that need to be taken care of uh, we have these two mandolins here, number 9 and 10 in the batch, that still need the same treatment, uh, uh, coloring and clear coat. Uh, from last week's job jar list, left over is the frets in this guitar-shaped K5 mandocello. And then we have this mandocello here that is more or less ready to get ready to put the finish on it. Now, speaking of that finish, it is going to be an unusual light gray to a dark gray sunburst and to that end I have uh, ordered some white colorant which is not as easy to find as you might think and I have uh, done some test stuff on just an old pine board that I've got here to see if the the two colors the black and the white will turn into a gray and and be compatible with each other which they appear to be and so the next thing that I'm going to try is I'm going to go to the maple pile and pull out a nice figured piece of maple and slick it down and try that same thing on the maple to see how well the figure in the wood will shine through what we've got because we don't want to cover that up and I don't know how well that's going to work so we're going to find that out this week as well if I can and that's about all I have uh, on the job jar list this week so Let's get started.
on to the next project and I have here a board it's a two inch board very curly uh, single piece and I have taped up the approximate size of the mandicello so that we can get an idea when the time comes about what size we want the interior color and what size we want the exterior color and like I said earlier it's going to be a light gray to a black or to at least a dark gray and we're going to see what looks best here in just a few minutes if we can Now here's an interesting diary entry. Uh, you recall a few episodes ago I mentioned about wanting to build a few guitars and a nice fella from up north named Kirby Francis uh, has sent me just a, a whole bunch of what I think is going to be guitar wood. Um, he runs a website or he actually does rec guitar repair and I think it's francisguitarrepair.com I think. So let's just open this box up and see what Kirby sent. So what we have looks like it's going to be seven tops, three mahogany necks that will need to have the heels glued on them, one set of what looks like uh, Indian rosewood back and sides, and what looks like some sort of mahogany, and um, a set that I'm not sure how they match up, but that almost looks like Purple Heart, and that doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before, so I don't know what that is. But, that was quite a pile of wood, wasn't it? Okay, it is the day after we shot this finish right here. And I'll show you why I taped it up so that we could get a good idea of about the size of a mandicello. So we knew about how the sunburst was going to look on the instrument itself. This is black stain and some stuff that I purchased called Mixol. And Mixol is a uh, white pigment. Well, you can get it in different colors, but I bought white. Now, the only thing yesterday that seemed to be compatible was mixing Mixol with lacquer thinner and then putting just a little bit of uh, a lacquer in there. So, basically, this inside here is a paint which I was not real happy with and the reason I wasn't real happy with it is because I think that the transparency is different here than it is out here and from the looks of it I'm probably right I like the colors and I like that and uh, hopefully the customer will too but I think I'm going to I, I researched mix all last night on the internet 
and it said that it would uh, it would break it would uh, you could add it with water and you know mix it down it doesn't necessarily have to be lacquer thinner or anything like that so I think we're going to flip this board over and do exactly the same thing again only trying to use the mix all with water and see if we can turn it more into a stain instead of a paint that's the plan anyway okay so here's an update with this uh, mix all stuff uh, cut with water and put on and it looked really good at first but then as the water evaporated most of the white pigment went completely away so I don't think that this is going to work there's a product called uh, white pickling stain and I have to take Bonnie Jean to the doctor tomorrow so I think we'll stop in at uh, some of the big box stores and see if they stock a white pickling stain I, uh, like I said when I was doing some research I I looked at a whole bunch of stuff and there was some guys on YouTube that were doing electric guitars with this white pickling stain so maybe that might be a solution so we're gonna to see tomorrow for now we're just gonna shut down on this project until we can figure out exactly how we want to get a gray to a black sunburst Well, another day has passed and we are back from our trip to town. And so I'll tell you everything that's happened since the last clip was shot. Yesterday, before I quit, I took this board and I put just a little bit of this mix all on my finger and just kind of rubbed it around there and lightened that thing back up to about where I like it. So this is what we were looking at in this previous clip. Right there, I've got the sunburst, and I can see the curl through it pretty well, which is better than the one where I mix this stuff with a little bit of lacquer that seemed to be a little more solid, and uh, you can't see through it as clear. So, I am going to stop right here and let the customer take a look at this and see if that's about what he had in mind as well. But... Uh, neither one of the box stores had white pickling stain, so, but I did run into a gal that seemed to know more about it than I did, and uh, she said that this was pretty close to the same stuff. It is a simply white, semi-transparent stain, and she said that I could actually add some of this to that, or just add more of this. So. Uh, we'll see. We'll talk up with the customer and see what happens. And I've got a backup here just in case that don't work. Uh, if you've noticed, I have drug a bench in here into this room. And I've done that because I'll be working on these Mandicellos and I have no holding fixtures or holding jigs or anything that I normally have for mandolins. So I needed a place to work on them without scratching them up and beating them up. So I drug this bench in here, and it'll probably stay here until I get these things done. And so I thought that uh, I would spend the rest of the day today cleaning up this guitar-shaped uh, mandocello in hopes of putting some finish on it. And let's see what else to share with you. It is the day before Christmas Eve right now, so you probably will not see this video until Christmas or after so I would like to uh, uh, wish you a Merry Christmas and wish you a happy holidays and may you have many 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 more and so I will close this video with that saying thank you so much for sticking all the way to the end with us and be sure and come back next week won't you for the next episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's weekly production diary Merry Christmas <music>